ich bin's wieder, David ähm, von Gameondo. Und jetzt stehen wir ähm, vor dem Stand von Oxym äh, Oxymoron Games und gucken uns Silence of the Siren an. Ein, ähm, im weitesten Sinne kann man sagen, ein rundenbasiertes Strategiespiel wie Heroes of Might and Magic in einem ab etwas abgefahrenen Sci-Fi-Setting. Sci First of all, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Ah, oh, it's good. So uh, we talk, um, we talk a little bit about it. S um, Silence of the Siren is a science fiction version of a classical Heroes of Might and Magic, especially Heroes of Might and Magic 3, right? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> so little story background. Yeah. Uh, you're you're playing as a race called Fostorians, or our fans like to call them the Space Malls. You can actually see them in here, <laughs> and they're actually well, they might seem cute, but they're kind of brute race. They like to count of brutal, a huge, overwhelming number and a lot of explosions and they tend to be kind of a totalism race you know uh, not really believing in free speech more like brutal power and destroying other opponents so in your gameplay definitely use that way uh, this story is about that uh, one part of the faction rebelled and you're going to destroy all the rebels okay uh, okay yeah. Uh, 21,000 gold. Yeah, you have a lot of resources in here, so you know this is an easy version of the demo. Yeah. So it's a little speed up. Overall, the game is really about uh, exploring, getting resources, capturing buildings to increase your income, and, and you want to create a strong army to destroy your opponents. Uh, we are planning to have more goals in the future, but because this is pre-alpha, mm -hmm. the only goal you have is to really destroy the one opponent, kill everyone you see, take no prisoners. That's what Fosorians do in the end. Uh, you're now in the town screen which is like you know, in, really inspired by the heroes and in here you can build some economical buildings or academy to teach uh, new skills to your commanders but really you focus on having the units actually the most powerful units you can get in the game are coming from your base from the spawner buildings or recruitment buildings uh, in here uh, I would also mention if you go to the recruitment which is this nice uh, building uh, no sorry next to that uh, this is recruitment for the meat boys uh, this is recruitment for all <laughs> Yeah, yeah, higher units, exactly. Ah, yeah, and, I can hire all units. Right? And here you can see that some units are also upgraded, which is something new from the hero, that every unit can be upgraded, but the upgrade is not only about the looks or the stats, but also it is giving something to the unit, which can be special ability or some new attributes. So, for example, if you click on the gunner, uh, on, on his picture, or custom, yeah, and you can switch here to this non-upgraded version, so you can see. Ah, I see. Yeah. yeah he Rattling Goon and Rattling Gunner. Yeah, and Rattling Goon is just a mini unit. It's actually super weak. Uh, usually, you, you, ta 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 hundreds, even thousands of them will die in a campaign. But when they're Rattling Gunner, they're much better because they can shoot one of the few shooter units the Fossorians have in their arsenal. I like Rattling Gunners. It's like warmer. <laughs> so I recruit all. And I hire a tunnel worm. I yeah, build this nice building. So my hero is isn't in the city yeah, at the start. Your hero is outside the base. It's outside the base. Ah, oh, here's a. Yeah. You can go into the base as the hero. Yeah, bulletproof beanie. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, every hero has his uh, story background. You can see it in here. I see it. Nice. I mean, typical tactics from the heroes, you know, is to have more commanders. We call them commanders, not heroes. <laughs> and one will be like the super strong one with a huge army, and he will clear of tackles for you. There's like a tons of monster armies on the map, which will, are guarding important buildings, resources, or even pathways. You can see, for example, in here, uh, that there is a unit, a uh, monster army, which is blocking your way. And if you want to get it up here, you need to kill it. Now, it's yeah, here. yeah, it's quite likely you will not defeat him. You can go to the base and get the unit to your hero. No, my new army. Yeah, exactly. No. Now I think you will defeat him, Miss East. Yeah, I try it. <laughs> yeah, he's looking back in your direction. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> this combat, uh, yeah, it's a typical hero's um, combat screen. I see. 
uh, in hex uh, rasters. Yeah, yeah, it's a hex-based battlefield. Uh, you can see the UI is a little more modern than the heroes have. You can try the special abilities of units. We have another small new improvements. Like, I mean, classical things. This is the wait button, so if you don't want to play as this unit now, it will be moved at the end of the turn. We can actually use it now. It will, it's, it's advantageous for you, because you have shooter units, but they do not. So, wait for them. Um, this also next to it is a skip button, a pass turn actually, so the unit will not play in this round. And we also have, and I will show, uh, if you have too many units on the battlefield and you connect Orient, you can just hold control and you will ah, play nice. more. And if you want to know how long they can walk, you can hold shift and point at the unit. And now we can, you can see how ah, okay. yeah. it can go. Uh, it's always of course advantages for you to wait for them to come in and to have the first shot into them. Gunner is a, um, is, is is a ranged attack? Shoot, exactly. Yeah, perfect. You can see actually that this area is, he can shoot everywhere on the battlefield, but this area means he has a weaker attacks. He's really focusing on close combat ranging. So this area near to him, the red one, is, it means that if they're near to him, he causes much more. He makes in the next turn more damage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But, oh. Nice. Here so at the beginning of the next round, you can see in here, you just have a nice coincidence that he played at the last and playing the first. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the battle begin. Now, he has a group attack, aerial attack, so you can attack more units advance if you aim it correctly. Yeah, you can see I it see. now. Oh, uh, he's good. Yeah, he's a good hammer it in it. Actually, he's a small mole inside a huge body. You can notice his small head. <laughs> and I see it's a little window. And this guy, before you will play with him, he has a special ability. Yes. Uh, so I will definitely, yeah, now he's in rage. And as in rage, he's something like a mole John Wick, really. <laughs> so you cannot control him, but he will kill everyone. I think someone killed his nice. small wall, mole pet, and he's just in, in rage now. I can say that the hostile units you're fighting with are from a different faction, from, from a faction called, well, the children of the, of the source. Of our fans call them Cyberbugs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can play in the game also as them, even if they're not from your faction. There are some skills, like the Negotiator, which you can negotiate units to get here to your army. Or there is a slave camp, you can free the slaves or buy the slaves, based on what you do. And in this way you can get even like very different kinds of units into your army. So, hooray! Enemy has been defeated. Yeah. So, ähm, wie man wahrscheinlich gerade schon sehen konnte, habe ich das Interview und das Anspielen ähm, gleichzeitig geführt. Ähm, wir haben halt die ganze Zeit noch ein bisschen gequatscht, ein Bier getrunken und ähm, über das Spiel auch gesprochen. Und ähm, im Prinzip, das Wesentliche wurde ja schon gezeigt und gesagt. Also wie man sehen konnte, es ist quasi Heroes of Might and Magic, speziell Teil 3, mit einem ähm, Science-Fiction-Setting ähm, und ein paar kleineren Verbesserungen und Sachen, die man halt ein bisschen anders gemacht hat. Ähm, in erster Linie habe ich nochmal gefragt, ob es, äh, auch wenn es ein typisches PC-Spiel ist, ob es vielleicht Pläne gibt, das noch auf Konsolen umzusetzen. Aber in erster Linie will man sich natürlich äh, erstmal auf die PC-Version fokussieren. Und ähm, eventuell, wenn, dann hatte, hätte man angedacht, wenn das, Spiel, wenn das Spiel gut läuft und alles gut und ähm, das released ist, dass man vielleicht eine Switch-Version anpeilt. Aber das steht alles noch in den Sternen und es ist erstmal auf dem PC angedacht. Ist noch eine Entwicklung, da muss eh noch viel fein, äh, fein geschliffen werden. Aber ich muss sagen, es sieht sehr gut aus. Mir gefällt der Stil. Und ähm, ja, also ich glaube, jeder Fan von Heroes of Might and Magic und jeder, der sich wünscht, mal, dass mal wieder ein guter Vertreter kommt in dem Setting, äh, in dem Stil, ähm, kann sich schon mal freuen und kann, kann es eigentlich direkt auf die Wishes packen. Also ganz ehrlich, ich glaube, das, das wird ein richtig geiles Teil. Okay. 